Hi everyone, Squire, welcome to highlights of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy. Round 4 is the glamorous Monaco Grand Prix, set around the streets of Monte Carlo. One of the most demanding circuits on the calendar, overtaking at the Monaco Grand Prix is near impossible, so a good qualification is crucial if you are to do well here. Now, there's some changes in the lineup from round 4. Michael Francisconi is replacing Zippoli today, while Renz Kopp is promoted to Bounty Piscari's main team, and a new team, E Racing France, will make their debut here at the home Grand Prix. With a possible win on the cards, Mark Olberts takes pole position ahead of his countryman Boshoff in second. Chinese Grand Prix winner Franz Schneider takes third and Kevin Serki in his best qualified position ever in fourth place. Thomas takes fifth with main trophy contender Ben Tusting in sixth and Renz Kopp in seventh for the debut for Piscara UN. <laughs> Carlos Martin is in 8th with Campus in 9th, Valerio rounding out the top 10 so Francis Goni misses out on the top 10. Piotti is in 12th with new driver Bowser's Gaia now replacing for the now banned Gajavan Kini behind Valanti in 13th and 14th respectively. Daniel Kiss returns but in his worst position ever in FSR in 15th place. Alberto Sicelli makes his debut in FSR for 20th Financial Racing and another new driver serial compare for E Racing France in 24th place. As mentioned before, Monaco is a difficult place to pass, so good qualification is essential here. To the race start, and Mark Olbers just gets a good start ahead of his teammate Boshoff, but Boshoff just uh, makes an impression as they go down into Sam Dvot. Boshoff taking the lead quite easily from his fellow countrymen. Siggy just tries to get alongside Schneider, but Schneider prevailed. Boshoff trying to keep a gap ahead of his fellow countrymen, but never un underestimate Olberts around the streets of Monte Carlo. Down to the lowest hairpin, and everyone in the top half managed to get through safely, though the second half couldn't be said the same. Jackson went red through the cleanly and went up a few places as, as a result. Still compare got through, but only just one place. Jackson Wentz is always on the lookout for more of the ticket opportunities. For example, when he went past uh, John Holmes after he spun, he moved up the place after Tabak. Back at the front, it is currently Boshoff leading from Alberts and Franz Schneider as they go into the second lap. Medrovic has a struggling race on his return, but is soon to get a turn for the worst when he lost connection and tied straight away. Litukoy has having quite the opposite, trying to chase down with the Netrex is down into the harbour chicane. He managed to pass, as I'm hoping to keep on the position until the laps are cut. His next target was Daniel Kiss, which it all came too easy when Kiss went into the barrier. He went to repairs earlier, but um, retired a few laps later, when he too lost connection. Back in the front, and the vehicles of a Ferrari team orders back in 2010. When Boshoff was uh, t told by possibly the management to let Ed Albers through down to Sand Vot. Then he let Ed uh, Franchise through a lap later. Siskelly's race is not going well by his standards, and it's soon bad turn for the worst as well for him when he crashes into the barrier, ending a disappointed debut. Mark Albers came in for a pit stop in a few laps later, thinking that he might lose the lead while he fought wrong. He rejoined just in front of Franz Schneider. Artem's race is having a little bit of an okay race, but unfortunately he broke too late for the Harvish Kane and as a result went on two wheels uh, when he went over the bumps. He, he went into the barrier, but he, he was able to make it back to the pits. But though he decided that he, he is uh, too far behind the field, he decided that enough was enough and retired with brake failure just after he exited the pit lane. Meanwhile, there was a close battle between uh, Boshoff and Martin, uh, which, which went on for more than 10 laps. Uh, Martin tried to find every opportunity to get past the Dutchman, but though sometimes Boshoff is uh, no way interested by the uh, uh, Spaniards uh, to pass on him. Then down into Santa Marta, he tried to make a move onto the inside, but unfortunately he clipped the curve too wide, causing him to go onto two wheels and a fall arm behind a bit. A few laps later, he caught up to the Dutchman again. Now, this time he was even more close than ever and tried every opportunity at Santa Marta, the Bassinet, the Casino Square, and also over the Mirabeau to pass him.
Amazingly, he made a move on the Lowe's hairpin and moved him up straight up to third place. Edward Corey was having a terrible race, currently seven laps down, but have soon put out of his misery when he smashed into the barrier thanks to suspension problems. And just when his bad luck was about to change, Franz Snyder's luck was about to turn for the worst, when he lost his steering and crashed into the uh, first of the swimming pool chicane. Disappointing result for him. Taking a dominating win around the streets of Monte Carlo, Marco was claims his first win of the 2013 season and hoping to start his championship campaign. Coming second is Ben Tusting, who is now leader of the World Trophy. And coming home in third for the very first time this season, Carlos Martin has gone into third place despite his earlier incident. Greg Boschov did a fantastic job today to take fourth position. Valerino manages to get fifth ahead of Ben's Cop, well deserved sixth. Kevin Siggy is in seventh. Francisco Ni, in his first ever WC race of the season, gets eighth. Purity is ninth with Valenti rounding up the top ten. The last point scorer is Campus, who retired earlier but they still managed to get 10 points in the bag because he completed over 70% of the race distance. Despite, the, despite Monaco being a tricky race for both of the, the rookies, Buzz and Gaia and Cyril Compare, they both retired in the race. Gaia with brake problems but Cyril Compare was just about 27 laps down but they still managed to finish but no points to him. Looking at the driver's standings, and um, Ben Tusting has taken the lead in the trophy. Marco Zippoli still has 110 points, but just now at 13 points back. Mark Albert takes his win, just about 4 points behind Zippoli. Carlos Martin is just ahead of Boschoff with 14 points in the bag. Valanti is 6 with Renz Klopp. A, a well deserved finish today with 7th uh, place just 1 point ahead of Van Reno. Franz Schneider is 9th with Holmes still in 10th. To the constructors and Ghost Speed have taken over Piscara UN for the lead. Positive Sim Racing to keeps third ahead of Paxball Racing despite their good efforts today. Alberto GP with 5th with both the P PSR teams orange and green, 6th and 7th respectively, with Piscara Tree in 8th, Night Racing in 9th, and GS Racing could rounds up top 10, with just about 2 points behind Night Racing. The next Grand Prix is the Grand Prix of Canada, and you can watch that race live as it happens on SimRace.tv on the 2nd of June. For qualifying at 11.35 GMT, we do race at 12 noon. Until then, you can check out www.formula-simracing.net for latest news and features. Check out us out on both Facebook and on Twitter, and as well, checking out the FSR Fantasy League, which just started this weekend. So join in for a chance at some first master prizes. It will be a good league for you, i tell you that. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and Ron Squire and join us for the next round of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy.